Our project was to apply slow fast networks to video object segmentation. Tasks on video generally have high computational requirements. Slow fast networks deal with this by splitting the workload in two branches. These branches have different input sizes and capacities. The original slow fast networks were used for video action classification. Our goal was to build an architecture that integrates the idea of slow fast and can be used for video object segmentation. With this, we want to evaluate if the idea of slow fast is generally useful for VOS. The main idea of our architecture was to extend mask RCNN with a slow fast module that integrates temporal context. In white, you see the original mask RCNN parts, which were fine tuned on the day this data set. The slow fast module is shown in red and it consists of two pathways. Both have three layers with 3D convolutions. The outputs of the fast pathway are fused into the slow pathway after every layer. Both pathways can see a variable number of frames. In the end, the concatenated outputs of slow and fast pathways and the region proposals for the middle frame are used by the mask RCNN head to compute segmentation masks for the middle frame. We are using both of the Davis datasets, which consists of short video sequences. First, some details about the training. In the unsupervised task, the backbone is frozen, as not freezing it didn't improve our results. For one-shot video object segmentation, we fine-tune the networks we get from the unsupervised task on the first frame of a sequence. We apply data augmentation, such as horizontal flipping, scaling and rotation. In the case of OSWAS, we only freeze the weights of the slow fast module as this best maintains the temporal benefit. Now we come to our results. We tested several configurations with different slow and fast pathway sizes. These are meant to evaluate the effect of the temporal context and the slow fast concept. Our configurations are 1 1, so both pathways see only one frame and no temporal context, 3 3 and 7 7, where both pathways see the same amount of temporal information and 1, 7 and 3, 7, where the fast pathway sees more context than the slow one. Below, you see some results of the Davis 16 leaderboard and our result. We wanted to show you these results as a reference, even though our task wasn't to beat them. Especially in the unsupervised case, all architectures use different techniques as we do, which makes a direct comparison hard. So now we come to the comparison between our different configurations. First, we want to talk about temporal context. In the unsupervised setting, we see a good improvement from 1 to 3 frames, but no further improvement from 3 to 7 frames. So seeing a lot of context doesn't seem to be beneficial. In the case of OSWAS, we generally see little temporal benefit and only between 3 and 7 frames. Here you can see the actual comparisons of using slow fast. In general, we can see the fast pathway can capture additional information, as an example when you compare 1.1 1, 1 and 1.7 in the unsupervised case, or 3.3 3 and 3.7 3, for OSWAS. If there was no improvement from temporal context, slow fast also does not work or show any additional improvement. For example, in the unsupervised case, as there is no improvement from 3.3 3 to 7.7, 7, there is likewise no improvement from 3.3 3, 3 to 3.7. As a last point, we come to our performance measures. Giving additional frames only to the fast pathway has much less influence on the performance than giving them to both pathways. You can see the difference between 3.3 and 7.7 is about 15 seconds, whereas 3.7 is only 2 seconds slower than 3.3. Finally, we want to show you some qualitative results. In the unsupervised setting, you can see that while they are all pretty similar, 1.1 seems to lose the object more and produce more artifacts, especially in the background. When we come to Oswald, you can see again the results are pretty similar, but 1.1 seems to detect objects in the background more, while the others seem to be more robust to this. So in conclusion, we built an architecture to apply slow fast for video object segmentation and applied it for unsupervised as well as semi-supervised segmentation. In general, our experiments show that the benefit of slow fast is strongly tied to the benefit of temporal context. And as there was mostly no performance improvement from small to large temporal context, we often couldn't observe the benefit from slow fast as well. But in the cases where there was a temporal benefit visible, using slow fast also improves the results while having little performance overhead. Thanks for watching.